Welcome to Uncommon Knowledge. I'm Peter Robinson. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash UNC knowledge, twitter.com forward slash unc knowledge. Born in Avignon on Christmas Day 1923, René Girard is the author of works that have been published in more than two dozen languages, including The Scapegoat and Things Hidden Since the Foundation of the World. His latest book, Achevé Clausewitz, will be published in the United States in 2010 as Battling to the End, Politics, War, and Apocalypse. In 2005, Professor Girard received the highest honor in France, induction as one of the 40 members of the Académie Française. One source of René Girard's thinking, a close reading of The Golden Bough, Sir James Fraser's classic study of ancient myths. Published in 1890, The Golden Bough explained that myths throughout the ancient world contained a central element, the periodic sacrifice of a sacred king dying and then resurrected. Christianity, the Golden Bough suggested, represented nothing but one more such myth, a point to which we will return. René Girard, bienvenue. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here. Segment one, insights. Mimetic desire. To quote one of your interpreters, Gil Bailey, quote, Desire, as distinguished from animal appetite, is always aroused by the desire of another. Explain. If, in order to invent desire, because desire is not natural, desire is not animal. Is it human? We don't know. It sometimes is human, sometimes it seems very inhuman. But how is it born? I think Desire usually uh, is born out of the contemplation of someone else who is desiring and who designates to you the object he's desiring as desirable. So every college student who wants to be an investment banker, obvious. They want to fly around in, the, in their own jet and yes. drive a Maserati. But how does this apply to the ancient world? Well, to the ancient world, uh, it has to apply in the same fashion. The objects are different, but the structure of desire, the triangular relationship of desire, object, model, and subject, are the same. Serpent, Eve, Apple. Serpent in the mimetic theory of, this, of desire is a symbol, a, an image of the, the mediator. In other words, the one who directs the subject towards the bad desire. The churches, you know, who know what they're talking about much better than most people think, know that example is the key to bad as well as good behavior. And this is nothing but what I call mimetic desire. Uh, so that's why the church uses the phrase the occasion of sin. Yes. Uh, now, Gil Bailey, once again, the imitative nature of desire leads to conflict. It leads to conflict, and this is a, both something very obvious and which is a paradox for most people when they first realize it. If you imitate the desire of someone else, you admire that someone else, or that someone else may be your best friend. But as soon as you both desire the same object, and the objects really desirable exist only in one copy. In ones. So I shouldn't say copy because it's not a copy. It's the original. There is only one, Helen, is only one, only one Helen of Troy. Original. Oh. And therefore they have to fight. Therefore the real, the theatrical situation par excellence is a situation of two people desiring the same object because they designate that object to each other. Once the imitated subject realizes he is imitated, this reinforces his desire. He said, I 
certainly selected the right object. As soon as this man saw her, he fell in love with her, like I did. Therefore, we are right. Therefore, I'm more convinced than ever that I should desire her. Therefore, he's my enemy. All right. This, I'm, I'm chuckling because as, as, you, as, we will, as the audience will learn, as simple as it sounds, it explains everything in a way. Let me quote you yourself, Rene, this time. If the, this moves on to the, the sec, your second basic insight, the violence and mm -hmm. the sacred. If there is a normal order in societies, it must be the fruit of an anterior crisis. Explain. It must be the, the result of an anterior crisis because people polarize around objects of desire. And this can be regarded as true even for food, for shelter, for places where you can live and so forth. So you can be sure that the human population in prehistorical time gathered around the same places because they were desirable, because there was water there and so forth. And <clears throat> they were united by that same desire and they were separated because very often there was not enough of whatever was needed, water, shelter, food, and they started to fight. That's why I don't think we should say man is so bad, you know, that he will always fight with his fellow man, even when he associates, the people he associates most closely with are the people he fight most, most uh, often with. They do because they are both moving toward the same thing. And these things are never in sufficient number. Or even if they are, you tend to trust your model All right. because you admire him. So you say he's seen in the object something more than I saw. And therefore, I must follow him more than ever. And this works both ways as the one who desires first is imitated in his desire, he's confirmed in that desire. But the conflictual situation is all over the place. It's coming from everywhere. 